Uh, my name is uh, Magnus Jørgensen. I'm an architect and I'm uh, currently a researcher at the Berlage Institute in, in Rotterdam, but uh, I'm also teaching at the Department of Urban Design and Planning at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology in Trondheim, as Luba said. And uh, that is uh, why I'm here today. Uh, in uh, 2008, I was leading a research studio at the NTNU called the Lawrence <coughs> Project, focusing on coastal settlements in the northern areas, uh, in which my now colleague here at the first row, as she graduated last autumn, uh, Kari Dalan, was one of the participants. Uh, the project was financed by uh, uh, NTNU and uh, Husbanken, a Norwegian housing bank. And um, the studio contributed to the project Northern Experiments, the Barnes Urban Survey, which has a brilliant homepage you can visit, um, which was initiated by the gallery and project space 0047 in Oslo and, and took also part in the Pond Barnes exhibition uh, curated by Pikene på Broen and uh, 0047. Uh, Pikene på Broen is also the organizer of this event, together with the Barnes Institute, if not, I'm not mistaken. So a uh, uh, big <coughs> thanks to them for inviting us. Uh, the background for the project, which eventually got the name uh, Breeding Cities, um, which had this front page. Um, uh, the background is uh, the increased focus on the northern areas due to fossil resources and prospects of new industrial era in the north. The urban structure of the region is uh, like what we find in, uh, on the European continent, as you see uh, at the top here, uh, for instance. We have a more or less continuous network of cities and infrastructure, while here is very much limited by the geography of the landscape. So what happens in one area will not necessarily benefit uh, the, the neighbor. So the question we asked ourselves was, what happens in the periphery as the urban areas grow? If you have a, a, try to develop uh, oil or gas fields, it might benefit some, but uh, there will be somebody in between that will, uh, will not uh, have a part of that cake. So um, over the last 20 years, we have experienced a global exodus of the countryside to the, to the cities, and this tendency seems to keep up. Uh, we have got an increased mobile and diverse global population, so this is a bit of the backdrop. While the northern areas, so north of Norway here, uh, are undoubtedly a per peripheral, decentralized environment, and uh, most sen settlements in this region are, are struggling with the challenges of the depopulation. And then we um, uh, found some kind of four different uh, uh, ch challenges or, or, or questions we wanted to, to give some kind of an answer to. And the first one was that uh, we have seen a, challenge, a change in the economy that made, made the mostly mono-industrial towns uh, vulnerable. As uh, the fishing industry, for instance, has become more kind of uh, big profit-oriented, mechanized, uh, the bigger ship, global oriented, uh, it has lost its connection to the local communities and the trad traditional fishing industry is more or less gone or at least uh, struggling in many places. Second, uh, we live now in a post-industrial society where the preconditions for production have changed dramatically. Knowledge has been become the main resource and unskilled labor force is uh, not anymore so interesting. Uh, young people move from the rural areas to the cities to uh, get education, but uh, once educated, there are no jobs for a skilled workforce to return to in the rural areas, even if they want to go back. And in this project, we mainly focused on the uh, Norwegian part of the Barents region. Um, this area can be considered uh, a breathing organism uh, or a dynamic size. As Magnus mentioned, you have the core population of some 150,000 people, consisting of the locals. On top of that uh, population, um, you have an additional population of part-time inhabitants. 
um, such as uh, tourists, urban nomads, migrant <coughs> workers, and lifestyle mi migrants. Um, the local population uh, of a town are likely to have ties to their community and its traditions. This is the core population who embodies the town's historical identity and are the heart and soul of every town. Um, they tend to live in standard housing and they expect uh, predictable jobs, uh, also for uh, the return of the newly educated. Um, <clears throat> they are the most stable population of the breathing city and they tend to stay at one place for a long period of time or even a lifetime. Then you have the uh, lifestyle migrants. Um, these are people uh, who tend to be attracted by the, the rurality of Norway. They often want to escape dense urban environments, searching for fresh air, more space, better health and a new life. Uh, their intention is to become uh, a part of a new community, to stay for a long period of time. Um, and uh, the past years, uh, there has been numerous examples of Dutch people doing this. Uh, uh, then you have um, yeah, immigrants from uh, Poland, for example. Form, they form the biggest group of immigrants in Norway. And they are part of uh, the migrant workers. Uh, this group vary both in age, education and occupation. But they are mainly coming to Norway uh, to work and to earn more money than they do in their homeland. Um, as most of them have a wish of returning to their home um, country one day. <laughs> um, they don't participate in uh, all the activities uh, outside of work, uh, which also makes it uh, difficult for them to learn Norwegian and become uh, integrated uh, in the, their new community. Then you have the urban nomads. Um, this is a relatively new group forming a mobile uh, workforce. They are likely to uh, have high ed education and to be working more independently than the migrant workers. They are students, artists, scientists, lecturers. They are some of us. Uh, and they work in uh, shifting environments, and they take their energy from doing that. They stay for a shorter or longer peri period of time, uh, and they need good work-life environments, cheap rent, space, activities. Uh, um, they contribute with valuable input to the places they stay, even though their work not necessarily is um, directly connected to the place. Um, tourism plays a very important role in, um, in the Barents region and it will continue to do that. In addition to the dominating slow cruise tourism, focusing uh, on the beautiful Barents nature, um, great adventures, extreme sports and other activities combined with more focus on sustainable tourism uh, could serve as an attraction. And this sketch here shows that one tourist per day equals one inhabitant with an extremely high consumption of culture and experience. So, of course, tourism is uh, very important for the region. The result of this is a temporary population much bigger than the core population. Um, Uh, the population differs in how long they stay and uh, the intensity uh, that they stay in. Um, the local population is a stable size, keeping the place going every day. The others are more unstable, but their presence for shorter or longer periods, more or less intensive, makes the cities breathe. Um, this might be just the dynamic that the region needs. Um, 
Yeah, but as mentioned, the challenge, uh, or maybe the biggest challenge with the dynamic population is integration. The typologies offered to people visiting small towns are not really good. Foreign workers are often placed in barracks, while tourists and other short-time migrators are placed in a hotel. Accommodating the same type of people in one place, separated from the rest of the town, results in minimal, minimal exchange between town and visitor. Um, so accommodating them in vacant houses and plots, in temporary dwellings like caravans, container homes, uh, and so on, might uh, be an idea to contribute to a more successful integration uh, following a, a, a larger contact surface between uh, the town and the visitors. Uh, also because then you can exploit um, the qualities already uh, existing in a town. And lots of the northern Norwegian towns have a lot of space and, and so on, might uh, be an idea to contribute to a more successful integration uh, following a, a, a larger contact surface between uh, the town and the visitors. Uh, also because then you can exploit um, the qualities already uh, existing in a town. And lots of the northern Norwegian towns have a lot of space. Uh, Magnus mentioned uh, the uh, competing. Um, the cities are competing, uh, but what if they start cooperating instead? Um, by cooperating instead of competing, by exploiting qualities that are already there, the region can gain more and become bigger than they will ever become uh, if every town wants every, uh, everything. Their own theater, their own culture house, their own uh, hospital or whatever. Um, so what is, if these functions these uh, public functions uh, were integrated in something that's already a big part of the region. Hurtigruten could serve as more than just a cruise ship uh, 